for those of you who are new to the iPhone, we'll just go through a couple of basics here and then we'll get into the more advanced features and abilities. First, we'll just show you how to open up the camera app. So from the lock screen, you have the camera icon bottom right. You can swipe upwards and it'll open the camera. You can also do this if you're already on your home screen. You can just access the camera application and it'll open it up. Now we'll start by taking photos. It's very simple. You can do this in three ways. You can tap right here, it'll take the photo. You can press on the volume rocker to take the photo. Or if you have your headphones plugged in, you can just press in the middle and it'll take the photo for you as well. Now with that being said, you want to take your photos not like this, so your volume rocker is not on top, you actually want them on the bottom. Okay, so your camera is actually facing up, and it's awkward to press the volume rockers on the bottom, but that's the way Apple's done it. If you do it the other way and you have a Windows computer, your pictures are going to show up upside down. And that's a very common problem that people have, and it's something that's a little bit annoying with the iOS camera. Now that that's out of the way, let's just go through a couple of modes here. So if we put this fancy duck here, right in the middle, what you can do is tap anywhere to focus. So if you want to focus on the duck, tap to focus. If you want to focus on something in the background, tap to focus. You can see it blurred up the duck a little bit. Once you've got what you want to focus on, you can just tap to take the picture. When you're focused, you also have an exposure section here. If you swipe up and down on this little sun, it'll darken the picture or brighten the picture. And that's a very simple tip here. And it'll just help you to get better pictures. Honestly, I most of the time just leave it normal. Tapping away will bring it back to default. Now, if you want to lock the focus at any time, so you can just specifically have the focus and move around, but it's going to stay in that position, you just hold your finger on the specific section. It'll lock. You'll say AE slash AF lock up top. And now you're locked on. So no matter what, you won't move while your camera's moving around. The focus is staying in that one place and you can do what you want, take the photo, and it's taken. It. Now with the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, we have a new feature called Live Photo, and that's a pop. You can see it's yellow. When it's yellow, that means Live Photo is on. And the way Live Photo works is when you take a photo with Live Photo on, we'll just go and take a look at this one that I took. If you press and hold using 3D Touch, it'll take a few seconds of photo. So a little bit before the photo, a little bit after the photo, and it'll give you that movement. If you don't like that, you can turn the live photo movement off by just tapping up here. It says live off. If you do want it, tap it and it'll be on. The next feature is a burst mode. So if you ever want to take a burst of photos, all you have to do is hold on the shutter button here. And you can see it takes a whole bunch of burst photos and you'll be able to see all your bursts in an album it creates. It'll be called bursts. Now let's go over the rest of the settings at the top here. So first we have on the left side, this is going to control our flash. Now you can see you have auto, on, or off. I usually set mine to auto, but for this video we're going to play with off. Beside that is the HDR settings. Now I usually leave this on auto. You can turn it on or off. Basically what it's going to do, it's called high dynamic range, and it's trying to get the best part of three exposed pictures. So overexposed, underexposed, and balance exposed pictures. And it's supposedly going to create somewhat of a dramatic image, and it should help with shadowing and things like that. So you can choose that, see how it looks, test it out compared to regular photos, and see if it actually makes a difference for you. I usually just leave it to auto. The setting beside HDR is live, we talked about that, and then beside that is a timer. So if you want to set a 3 second or 10 second timer, you can do that, and then when you take the picture, it's going to take that time, and you can see the button down here, and then it'll go ahead and take the photo for you. Beside the timer, we have our front-facing camera. This will flip between the front and rear-facing cameras, so you can see it's just going to flip. Now you can see me, you can access pretty much everything the same way. Some features aren't available on the front facing camera, but everything I'll show you pretty much will work on this camera as well. On the bottom we have our photos, you can tap on that and see the photos you've taken. You can also use 3D Touch by pressing and holding and then scrolling across them like this. And then it'll take you back when you let go. And on the right side here we have filters, this is very much like Instagram so you can change the filter, but you get to see a live look of what it'll look like with all the different filters. Now let's scroll through the different modes here, and it's very easy to do so. You just swipe to either the left or the right to go through each one of the modes. We'll go through each one individually, and we'll start with the panoramic all the way to the right. Now this is going to take an interesting photo. It's a little bit difficult to take, but basically what you're going to do here is you're going to hit the panel button, the shutter at the bottom, and you're going to try to follow that arrow on the line here. We'll try to do this live, so I'm going to start facing this way. We'll tap that. And I'm going to just try to keep this arrow as close as I can to the yellow. It's a little bit hard. When you come off your line there, it's going to stop. And then you can take a look at that panoramic photo. And depending on how accurately you moved, 
will depend on how good your photo looks. So that's kind of giving you almost a full room look. And I had the phone in this portrait mode, so that's pretty good because standard you would just see the TV. So I was able to get all of that in there. So it's interesting, especially when you got like really nice scenes. The next mode is square mode. This is pretty much the same as photos. You can do everything you could there, except you don't get the live ability up top, and you're not going to be able to take the wide angle photos if you turn it to the side. It's just a basic square, very much like how you would take a picture on Instagram. So back over, we're in photos, we looked at that, and video. Now video has gotten some changes as well. You can do pretty much the same things, but you can see at the bottom it says 720p. I'll go over that in the settings, how you can change that to either 1080p as well as 4K. We'll look at that in the full settings setup here, which we'll just check out in a bit. But again, you can turn a light on up here. If you turn it on, it'll light up in the background. I'm not sure if the camera picks that up, but it did turn on the light for you back here. Sorry for blinding you. So if you need a light with your videos, you can turn that on. I'll just turn it off right now. Again, you can flip so you can see the front facing camera. You can take video this way. On the bottom, you have your photos again, you can take a look at, and then tapping to focus, same way. You can lock your focus just by holding, and it'll say that lock up top. Again, your exposure, you can play around with that. And it's very much like how you would take your photo. Now, if we move over, we have the slow-mo, and this is going to take a slow motion video. So what we'll do is we'll just tap on slow-mo, and I'm gonna create something that's gonna sort of go by and hopefully this picks up and works good on video. So you tap slow-mo and it's going to slow-mo the video that goes across. So stop it and if we take a look here, if we watch the video, so you can see that it slowed the video right down to that slow-mo. Now we can change some slow motion settings as well. We'll go through that in the settings section. Again, you have a light up top. You can turn the light on, off, or have it set to auto. Now lastly, with these features, we have the time lapse. So if we swipe to the right, time lapse basically transforms a long video and speeds it up completely. If you've seen the hangover, how it transfers over from night to day, and it does that in a matter of seconds, but you get to see how the sun rises and all that stuff. That's basically what it does, and on screen you saw an example of that. So if you want to take some cool shots like that, you can. The features are very simple. You tap that, it'll start the time lapse. You can flip the camera again, and you can check out your photos. Also, focus and exposure are available as well. Now let's take a look at the settings section. That'll give you some extra features to improve your photos. So we'll open up the settings application, and you want to navigate or search for photos and camera. When you open that, you're given a whole bunch of settings. We won't go through these settings here because they're all given to you with the examples. We'll focus on camera though. First, we have grid. Now, if you turn this on and you go back into the camera app, you'll notice that we now have this grid along your photos. This is going to help you get a straight photo, especially if you don't have a tripod or anything like that. You can see how it's lined up with the grid lines. Once again, below that we have the record video. So when you take videos, you can choose to take them in 720p at 30 frames, 1080p at 30 frames, or 1080p at 60 frames, or 4K at 30 frames. Now just a few things to consider when choosing this. The larger you go, so if you take a 1080p or a 4K, those are going to be larger videos, especially 4K. So if you have a 16 gigabyte device, 4K video is gonna burn through that memory quickly. So for me, I'm keeping it at 720p HD at 30 frames right now. Most videos are taken at 30 frames. 60 frames, the best I can give you as an example is that's how soap buffers kind of take their video at 60 frames. You kind of get that live feel to it. But most people, most videos, most movies are in 30 frames and that's where I would usually keep it either the 720 or 1080. But for every now and then you can switch it up to a 4K to see the difference in quality. Now below that we have the slow-mo settings and this is pretty much the same. You can take slow motion videos at 120 frames per second at 1080p or 720p HD at 240. So you can see at 240 and 120 you're going to get different speeds in the slow-mo. You can choose this again. It's giving you little examples here. At a minute of slow-mo will be approximately 375 megabytes with 1080p enabled at 120 and 300 megabytes with 720 and 420. So again, depending on the memory you have and how much of it you can use for video and want to use, choose that accordingly. Finally, if we move back below that, we have the Keep Normal Photo. This involves the high dynamic range, so the HDR photos. So if you wanted to save the normal exposed photo as well as the HDR version, you can select that on or off. Again, the example.